Point number one, uh, he mentioned and by uh, Ibn Aqib al miski is eating. Number two, any drinking and smoking. Though if there is smoke in the air, that one in, unintentionally in, inhales and it does not invalidate the fast. Basically, to understand uh, this is, uh, we say that everything that enters the body's cavity invalidate fasting. Everything that enters the body's cavity invalidate fasting. And the condition is that particular thing must be ayn. There is a difference between uh, al-ayn, or we say in our scientific terms, solid. Something any which is solid. Solid or liquid. Anything which is solid or liquid that enters the body's cavity, it invalidates fasting. But pertaining to gas and vapor, it does not invalidate fasting. So can we see the difference now? I say that everything which is a solid and uh, liquid. And to make things simple, I, 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 I mentioned this. But of course, there are a lot of conditions. Eh? But as a, as a beginning to understand things, uh, to make things simple for everybody to understand, everything which is a solid or liquid that enters into the body's cavity, invalidate fasting. Pertaining any to gas and vapor, it does not invalidate fasting. Imagine you are walking in the streets and then you pass by a coffee shop and then a person is cooking or doing barbecue. So all this uh, smell and vapor and it enters into you. And then you breathe in all this vapor. And you can, you can taste, I mean, you can, uh, when you breathe in and you can taste any the, what you call it, uh, the food, meaning you can, you can sense it. In this situation, we say your fasting is still valid so breathing in any vapors does not invalidate your fast if a person is using perfume imagine a person and he use a lot of perfume in a sense that the perfume and he is constantly and he is sniffing any the perfume in this situation also we say that the fasting is still valid even though the vapor any enters any into the body's cavity because this is not considered to be al ain in the uh, in the term any in islam we say that this particular thing is not considered to be al-ain. Al-ain basically it is something that you can feel and you can touch. So basically they are talking about solid and liquid. Something that you can, you can feel and you can touch. So anything solid and liquid enters into the body's cavity, your fasting and you will be invalidated. That is why we say eating and invalidate the fast. Because when we eat and we are putting uh, things and into, our, into our body's cavity, it invalidates the fast. Drinking also invalidates the fast. And anything that enters into the body cavity. And the body's cavity in our mother of Imam Shafi and most of the madahib includes their ears. Their ears is considered to be a body's cavity. And also the nose, the mouth and the private parts. And we do not consider the eyes to be part of the body's cavity. Meaning if anything enters through your eyes, it does not invalidate your fast. Even though you can feel at your throats, if something enters in your eyes and you can feel it at your throats, it does not invalidate your fast. Because we do not consider the eyes to be a body cavity. We consider the ears, we consider the nose, we consider the mouth, we consider the private parts to be the body's cavity. So anything that enters through the body's cavity, it invalidates fasting. And there is something that we have to understand also. We do not talk about entering the body's cavity and reaching the stomach. Reaching the stomach is not a condition. Remember this. Reaching the stomach is not a condition. So for example, if, if a person, if a person, uh, people are nowadays ask a lot about swimming, for example. Is it permissible for a Muslim to swim while he is fasting or not permissible? In this particular situation, we say, if a person dives into the water, what happens? Imagine any you dive into the water. Uh, water will enter your ears. Just talking about the ears, water any will enter into your, into your ears. In this situation, when water into, enter into your ears, it enters into your ears, but it does not, the water any does not reach your stomach. Correct or not? 
Because water yani, that enters into their ears, it does not reach the stomach. But we say that the fasting is invalid. Because we do not consider that a particular thing to enter the stomach for us to say that the fasting becomes invalid. It is not a condition. But we say that if anything enters through the body's cavity, it invalidates fasting. Whether that particular thing enters the stomach or did not enter the stomach. So we should not be confused because there are people who are confused in this. There are people who thought that it must enter the stomach, then fasting becomes invalid. That is not a condition. Another example I will give is pertaining any to istinja. Imagine a person is doing istinja and water enters into the private parts. He or she is doing excessively and water enters into the private parts. Is the fasting valid or not valid? Fasting is invalid. But now a person and he does any istinja and water enters into the private parts. It does not reach the stomach. But we say that since the water enters into the body's cavity, it invalidated fasting. So we do not talk about whether it reaches the stomach or it does not reach the stomach. We are talking about whether it enters the body's cavity or it does not enter into the body's cavity. So anything that enters the ears, anything that enters in the mouth, the nostrils and the private parts, it invalidated fasting. That is why when we are bathing, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Yani when we are bathing, whether we are using the shower or we are bathing in the bathtub. If you are using the shower, uh, it is easier to, to, uh, to protect yourself any from uh, things that invalidate the fast. Just make sure that water any does not enter into deep into your ears. That's all. Your fasting any is still valid. Just make sure that when you, when you bathe, water any does not enter into the depth any of your depth of your of your ears. If water if enter into the exterior part of your ears, it is okay. What we are talking about is the interior part of the ears because the ears we have exterior and interior. Pertaining to the exterior, no problem. What we are talking about is the interior. The same thing if you are using this uh, co a cotton bud and you are cleaning your ears. It is permissible that you do, do so if you are cleaning the exterior part of your ears. But if you are inserting the cotton bud into the interior part of your ears, your fasting becomes, your fasting becomes invalid. So anything that you make to insert into your ears and it reaches the interior part of the ears, your fasting becomes invalid. The same thing pertaining to the mouth. The, uh, the mouth also we have exterior and interior. If you take food and you put inside your mouth, your fasting is still valid. But when the food enters into the exterior part of the mouth, into your throats, then only your fasting and it becomes, your fasting and it becomes invalid. So we have to understand where is the, uh, where is the part where the starting point of our body's cavity. Because even for the nostrils also we have the starting point. Even for the mouth also we have starting point. Even for the ears also we have a starting point. So we have to ascertain where is the starting point. And even in our private parts also. We have to, uh, we have to understand where is the part that water can enter and where is the part that water cannot enter. Because everything we have exterior and we have, we have interior. In, in the chapter of fasting, we are only talking about the interior part of the body's cavity. We are not talking about exterior part. We are not talking about, we are not talking about exterior part. So anything that enters the body's cavity invalidate the fasting. Point number three you mentioned here, taking a snuff up the nose that reaches the sinus. Meaning, you have phlegm, for example, in your nose and then you, you swallow. It is invalidated fasting. This invalidated fasting. So whether the phlegm that comes, the, the, the phlegm and it are of two types. One, it comes any from the, uh, from the brain. Another one comes any from the stomach. So the phlegm any that comes any from the from the brain any it, it, it will go steady through the nose through the nose. So if it goes through the nose, if we have the ability to uh, remove the phlegm from our nose, it is compulsory upon us to remove it. If we do not do so and we swallow the phlegm in our nose, then it invalidate the fasting. But pertaining to the phlegm that comes straight from the brain all the way to the stomach, yani through our uh, what you call it throats. This does not invalidate fasting because we do not have the ability any to remove it. So the phlegm that comes from the brain, they are of two types. The one is the, it comes any from the brain to the nose, and the other one is come from the brain and it's straight away any through our through our stomach. In this particular situation, we say that the first invalidated fasting, the second any does not invalidate fasting. So when we have phlegm any in our nose, it is compulsory that we that we remove it and not to. 
and not to swallow it. If we have the ability to do so, if we, uh, if, 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 uh, we, uh, we do it not in purpose or we do not have the capacity to do so, sometimes any, uh, we, we suffer with a lot of lamb until we do not have the, uh, uh, what you call it, the ability any, to remove it at all times. So these are the cases any, which are forgiven. Cases we have forgiven. But the ruling pertaining to phlegm is this. We cannot swallow any phlegm. We can swallow the saliva though. Saliva can be swallowed. So there is a different ruling pertaining to saliva and phlegm. Pertaining to saliva, we can swallow, uh, swallow any saliva, no problem. But what we are talking about is phlegm that comes any to the nose or come any from the stomach, up. Imagine any, when we have phlegm any from the stomach and it comes any and it uh, enters into the exterior part of our mouth. In our mother of Imam Shafi'i, the prevailing judgment, uh, the Mu'tamad is, as what well, I mentioned by Imam Nawawi, the beginning of our mouth is when we pronounce the letter Kha. If you pronounce the letter Kha, that is the beginning of your body's cavity. So now, how do we ascertain now? Imagine there is phlegm and from the stomach comes up. And it reaches any, the point when you say Kha. Meaning when you say Kha, the phlegm can come out. Now, this is a situation we say that it is compulsory upon you to remove it. Understand? Sometimes the phlegm is stuck in the throat. That is not compulsory. So the point any of uh, the beginning any of our body's cavity is at the point when, he, when we utter the letter Kha. That is the point. And this is the opinion of Al-Imam Nawi. And this is the thing that we hold on any in the mother of Al-Imam, the mother of Al-Imam Shafi'i. So if the phlegm any comes from the stomach, it depends. If you reach any letter Kha, then it is compulsory upon us any to remove it. The same thing any for the phlegm that comes any from the brain also. If the phlegm and it comes any into the in exterior part of the mouth, then it is compulsory upon us any to spit it out. Toy. Number four, anything that goes into the uh, private parts. So when we are doing istinja, we have to be careful. When we are doing istinja, we have to be careful. And also when we talk about sexual intercourse between husband and wife, you, later any we'll talk about uh, sexual intercourse and the rulings pertaining to sexual intercourse. But basically, there is a situation that our, our fuqaha in dimension. If a husband and wife any perform sexual intercourse and they do it unknowingly and unintentionally, the fasting is still valid for the husband, but the fasting is not valid for the wife. Because of this, this is the point, point number four. Because something and it has entered into the, uh, into the body's cavity. That is why we say that the fasting any of the wife any becomes invalid. Number five is... Uh, Pouring water into the ears until it reaches the eardrum. The eardrum is the point of the, the point of the body's cavity. So anything any that reaches any the eardrum invalidate the fast. So if you bathe any using shower tap and you do this, you point the, the, the water any into your ears. Confirm any your fasting becomes invalid. Confirm your fasting becomes becomes invalid. Number seven, uh, uh, number six, inserting a finger or something else into the anus or vagina further than the ear disclosed when one squats. Disclosed when one squats. This is the point any of the beginning of the body's cavity. And when we do istinja, we have to be careful. Otherwise, our fasting becomes, our fasting any becomes invalid. Anything that enters the body's cav cavity is what we mentioned. So whether we are talking about uh, anything, whether we are talking about food or anything that enters into the body's cavity. Today people are asking about injection, whether injection invalidates the fast or does not invalidate the fast. There are differences among our scholars. Uh, some scholars any mention all forms of injection invalidate the fast. Some scholars mention that injection does not invalidate the fast. And those who say that injection does not invalidate the fast, does not, uh, no, does not uh, invalidate the fast, they say that injection is done not through the body's cavity. Because when we do injection, we are injecting something into the body, not through the body's cavity. Most injections, any they do any from the, uh, from the arms. Is this a body cavity or not a body cavity? This is not a body cavity. Or even any we talk about any injection any from the, from the uh, from from the main veins. Also, it is not from the body's cavity. So some scholars mention that injection any does not invalidate, does not invalidate fasting. But uh, most of our scholars, they mention that injection can invalidate fasting. 
So we have to look at the nature of injection. Injection that is done through the main veins. Invalidate fasting. Injection that is done and it through the main veins, invalidate fasting. But injection, if it is done not through the main veins, does not invalidate fasting. So if a person does injection and in the arms, does not invalidate fasting. But if a person does injection and he forms the main veins, it invalidates fasting. Understand or not? And this is only pertaining to medication. Injection because of medication. But injection to uh, inject glucose and vitamins, there is no differences amongst the fuqaha. All of them mention that it invalidates fasting. Imagine you are fasting and you inject glucose. Say, I, I do not eat but I inject glucose. Or I inject water. Because nowadays we have technology. Correct or not? We have technology that we can insert water into our veins. We can insert water to our body, not uh, by, by drinking or by eating. There is a way you need to do it. In this particular situation, all our scholars mentioned that this type of injection invalidated the past. Because it goes against any the purpose of fasting. You are injecting any glucose and food and into, your, into your body. And point number eight is vomiting. If it is deliberate and one is able to prevent it. Pertaining to vomiting, it only invalidates if it is done intentionally. If a person does vomiting intentionally, automatically the fasting becomes invalid. Vomiting intentionally meaning any putting the finger into the mouth. And then he vomits. In this situation, fasting becomes invalid. But if a person is sick and he, and he vomits, in this situation, we say it does not invalidate the fasting because it is not done deliberately. So we say that the fasting is invalid unless if you swallow the vomit. If that happens, then we say the fasting is invalid. Taib. Unless any, if he cannot control it, meaning the, the vomiting is a lot and unintentionally he, he swallow any part of the vomit. It is forgiven. It is okay. Number nine is sexual intercourse. If deliberate, even if, it is an, if it, there is no orgasm. When there is a sexual intercourse, if a person does it intentionally and knowingly, fasting becomes invalid. Invalid for the male and invalid for the female. Both and it becomes invalid. And this is one of the major sins that a person and can do in the month of Ramadan. To perform sexual intercourse intentionally. If a person does sexual intercourse unintentionally, then there is no sin. If a person does sexual intercourse unintentionally, there is no sin. And uh, fasting is still valid for the male, as what we mentioned. But for the female, he, she has any to do imsak, and it is compulsory upon her to make the qada. Because we are talking about another point that is invalid in the past, that is something and entering the body's, the body's cavity. And uh, if, there is, uh, if it is done deliberately, even though there is no orgasm, it becomes invalid. Or orgasm from stroking a non-genital region. Or from masturbation. Masturbation invalidates fasting. If there is ejaculation. If there is ejaculation, it invalidates fasting. If there is no ejaculation, it does not invalidate fasting. But pertaining to sexual intercourse, when there is insertion, it invalidates fasting, even though there is no ejaculation or no orga orgasm. Understand or not? So there is a difference between masturbation and sexual intercourse. Mas masturbation, ejaculation is not a condition. Afon, sexual intercourse, ejaculation is not a condition. Automatically it becomes invalid when the penis en enters the vagina. But pertaining any to masturbation, there must be uh, ejaculation or orgasm. Then only the fasting becomes the fasting becomes invalid. No matter whether such orgasm is produced by un unlawful means like one's own hand or whether by lawful means. By such as the hands of one wife, whether uh, it is done by lawful means or unlawful means, this is what is mentioned. Masturbation, any invalidate fasting when there is an ejaculation. Taib. Point number ten is using so much water to rinse out the nose and mouth in ablution, or the bathing, obligatory bath. If any reaches the body's cavity because of using an abundance of water, it breaks the fast. So imagine if you are taking wudu and you are putting water into the mouth and the nose, and you are doing excessively. And some of the water enters into your mouth or enters into your nose, your fasting becomes invalid. Your fasting becomes, becomes invalid. If uh, any, uh, anything any enters your mouth or enters your nose. But if you are doing it excessively. If you are not doing it excessively, it is forgiven. 
it is forgiven. So when we are taking wudu or bathing the obligatory bath, it is a sunnah that we rinse our mouth. Sunnah. It is still a sunnah. But we have to do it carefully. Do not do it excessively. That is the only thing. If you are doing it excessively and part of the water enters into your body's cavity, your fasting becomes invalid. But if you are doing it uh, normally, then your fasting and it is still, your fasting is still valid. Point number 11, swallowing, swallowing uh, saliva that has left the mouth. Such as when threading a needle when, and one moistures the end of the thread and then re-moistions it. You see, this is something which is a bit difficult. It is mentioned also in Minhaj by Alimah Munawawi. And in the reliance of the traveler Umratul Salik, he, he used this exact example of uh, what is mentioned by Alimah Munawawi. But basically, I do not want to make things difficult for you to imagine what is, uh, what is mentioned here. Basically, what he is trying to say, this point, maybe you can just put in bracket. He is trying to say that if your saliva exit your mouth, if your saliva exit your mouth and you swallow it back, your fasting becomes invalid. So, the most simple example that I can give, but, I, but you, you, this, this example is just an example, it won't occur. It's an example of a person who spit out his saliva and then he swallow it back. Imagine. In this situation, we say, we say the fasting becomes invalid. Although it is his saliva. Although it is his saliva. Because we might think that saliva is something which is, does not invalidate the fast. If you swallow any of your saliva, it does not invalidate the fast. But unless if a person, he spits out and then he swallow it back again. The, the, the example that is used by the author here is, by using any uh, thread. If a person any puts any saliva any in the thread, and the saliva any ex, uh, exits uh, his mouth, and then after that he swallows it again. In this situation, he say that the fasting becomes invalid. Because he is swallowing any something that has exited any from his, from his mouth. Point number 12 is uh, swallowing saliva that has been qualitative altered, such as when threading a needle and one wears the end and some die from the thread remains in the mouth and is swallowed. Now, this is the same thing, uh, about the same thing as what is mentioned. So, people who use toothpaste should take care to eliminate it from the mouth before dawn to of fast days. The same thing any, when, we are, when we are brushing our teeth and using the toothpaste. We must make sure that all the excess of the toothpaste are removed. If you were to swallow them, then our first fasting any becomes, our fasting any becomes invalid. Because now our saliva is mixed any, with the toothpaste. Our saliva is mixed. So when we swallow our saliva with a mixture any of the paste, then our fasting any becomes fasting any becomes invalid. Toy, we'll continue a bit more before we go for our break. Point number 13 is swallowing saliva that has been made impure by contact with filth najasa, such as when one's mouth is blooded and one spits off saliva until it is clear and colorless, but neglects to wash one's mouth before swallowing the saliva. Imagine if there is blood in your mouth and you swallow it your fasting becomes invalid because now there is najasa that is mixed any with your saliva. So what you have to do is to spit out the, sal the saliva and the filth until any, uh, all the filth any are uh, removed. Otherwise, any fasting any becomes invalid. Point number 14 is allowing phlegm or mucus at the back of the mouth not to be swallowed when one could have spit them out. Though in the Hanafi school, this does not break the fast even if intentional. There is a difference any, uh, amongst the fuqaha pertaining to swallowing phlegm and mucus. Uh, in our madhab, as well, I mentioned that uh, swallowing phlegm invalidates the fast. If one has the ability to remove it, it is compulsory upon one any, to remove it. The translator any, uh, mentioned this uh, opinion in the Hanafi madhab that phlegm and mucus does not invalidate the fast, even though it is intentional. So we have differences among the scholars. What we have to do is, we follow any the stricter opinion to be safe. Follow the stricter opinion. In within our mother, Imam Shafi'i, that phlegm and mucus invalidate the fast. So if you have phlegm and mucus and you do not swallow it, do not swallow it. What we do is, make the effort any to remove it. Uh, make the effort to remove it. Because this can invalidate the fast. Number five, to continue love making even for a moment after dawn has arrived. If a person is doing love making, for example, sexual intercourse, and the adhan of subuh any has come in, if a, if a person any continues, then of course any the fasting any becomes fasting any becomes invalid, even for a even for a moment. Toy. 
Let me see. Uh, Mashallah, we have a lot more. We will have our break, inshallah, at 11.30, inshallah. Ten, ten more minutes. There is uh, some... Uh, uh, what you call it? Some food behind. The criterion for things that invalidate the fast. The criterion as to whether something invalidates the fast is whether it comes under any one of three headings. Number one, a substance. Now this, uh, again, and he's talking about the conditions that breaks any of the fast. So number, thing is, uh, number one is a substance. Even if not much, that reaches the body cavity through an open passageway. Substance excluding odors. And open, excluding anything else such as absorption through pores. This is pertaining to what we mentioned earlier. Anything that enters into the body cavity, that it has to be an iron. Something that either a solid or liquid, something that can be felt. This is the thing and it that invalidates the fast. So other than that, like odor and vapor, it does not invalidate. It does not invalidate the fast. And also it has to go through the body's cavity, not any through pores. Because there are some ointment that you put in your hands, they can enter into your bloodstream. But they enter in it through, the, through the pores, not through the body's cavity. In this situation, we say that the fasting any is still valid. Point number two, sexual intercourse, meaning inserting the head or the penis into the vagina. If, uh, if, uh, if anything minimum than this, it does not invalid, invalid the fast. Number three, orgasm, whether as the result of touching, kissing, uh, contact, lying between the other side or something else, or because of masturbation. If there is a, a, an orgasm or ejaculation, as what we mentioned, that it invalidates the fast uh, with, with uh, condition, yani, with condition. Inshallah, later we will mention the condition and the pertaining to the uh, masturbation and the things that invalidates it. And then he mentioned the expiration for uh, uh, not fasting a fast day by sexual intercourse. In addition to making up the fast, the expiation is obligatory for fast days. This is pertaining to a person who does sexual intercourse in the days of fasting. Imagine a person who purposely do sexual intercourse in the uh, days of fasting. Not only it is sinful, it is compulsory upon him and her to do imsak, meaning to refrain from things that invalidate the fast. And also it is compulsory upon them to make qadha, make up for the fasting that they have, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, where they, they perform the sexual intercourse. And then it is compulsory upon them to pay the kafar, expiation. This is what the authors mentioned. Compulsory upon them, you need to pay the kafar. So in addition to making up the fast, an expiation is obligatory for fast days of Ramadan that are deliberately violated by sexual intercourse. The legal occasion of the offense is a particular day of fasting, so if it is committed on two separate days, two separate expiations will be necessary. The expiation consists of freeing a sound Muslim slave. This is the first thing. If he has the ability to free a slave, then it is compulsory upon him to free a slave. Nowadays, we do not have any slaves, so we go, we go to the second, second stage. If this is not possible, then to fast the days of two consecutive months, continuously, to fast two months continuously. If this is not possible, meaning a person does not have the ability to fast, and then he said that the expiration is to feed 60 unfortunate, any 60 poor people, 0.51 liters of food, meaning one mod of rice that is given any to the poor people, 60 of them. If one is unable to do this, the expiation remains as an unperformed obligation upon the person concerned, the woman who is made love to is not obliged to expire. Pertaining any to the, to the woman or to the female, there is no expiration, no kafara. Kafara is only any to the male. This kafara is only to the male. So if a, if a, imagine husband and wife do sexual intercourse in the day of Ramadan. What is compulsory is upon the husband to pay the expiation. Whether to free a slave or to fast any two months continuously or to feed 60 poor people. It is compulsory any upon the Upon the husband, not upon the wife. This is what is mentioned here.
قد كفاني علم ربي قد كفاني علم